Hey church, hey, thanks for joining us for our, our devotion today. And we're going to be uh, looking at another character today. Um, and, and really we're continuing to look at men and women of the Bible who we can look at and look at some of their strengths and some of their weaknesses and make them practical for us in our own faith today. Today we're looking at Elijah. I think he's a fantastic uh, person, very close to the Lord. And again, someone that had great strengths, but he also had some weaknesses that we'll point out today. Uh, Elijah was a prophet, and, and he was one of these guys who um, spoke in the name of the Lord, Yahweh. He would petition him and pass it on to those in authority. But the interesting thing is he, like other prophets of Yahweh, often did things on their own. And, and that was very curious to me as I considered this. You know, guys like Isaiah or, or Samuel often found themselves alone, and he was just like them. But he was one of these guys who uh, took on kings and queens and, and, and false prophets, and, um, and he was doing it on his own. Secondly, I think he listened to God in a way that was remarkable. He asked God for things that I don't think anybody else did, and God a lot of times showed up. One of the ones is interesting. You may remember this story that he... He's um, hungry, and God sends him ravens to give him something to eat. You know, the, uh, a few months ago, we were at the Grand Canyon, and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen these birds. They're giant crows. We see crows a lot, but not ravens. But we were able to see these two ravens. They were kind of perched on an uh, old uh, tree, an old dead tree, and people were taking pictures of these giant birds. So I can only imagine that. These birds can actually take food to somebody because they're so large. Uh, he asked God to stop the rain, and God did that. And then he goes, okay, God, make it rain again. And God did that as well. Uh, he asked God to come down in the form of fire and consume this uh, sacrifice that he made. And God just consumed it, licked it up, and took care of that. And he, and he listened to God and chose disciples and four of them that we know elisha was the one that's more more prominent and he gave his life to them so many great incredible things about this man of faith but he also had some pitfalls as well uh one of the struggles that he had right out of the, after this mountaintop experience at mount carmel right he takes on all these false prophets and he and god licks up the fire and all that kind of stuff Right after that, the queen, Jezebel, says, I'm going to kill you. And the word gets out. And what does Elijah do? He consults God. He prays to God. No. Nope. He takes off running. And the Bible says that he was gone a day's journey into the desert. Hmm. After this great victory, Elijah, you know what to do. Go and talk to God about this. No, nope. he takes off running. And I think that's very interesting. Where is he going? What's he doing? Have you ever felt like this? In your marriage, with your kids, with life happenings, your job, you just want to take off running. You don't want to talk to anybody. I know I felt like that before. I would say that Elijah suffered from depression. There are signs that he he had so many highs and lows. Perhaps he he suffered from depression. So we can definitely learn from that. And what does God do to revive him when he actually comes to, if you will? He sends him more things to eat by way of an angel. And the interesting thing is, you know, does God discount that, take that away from him in terms of his righteousness or say, hey, Elijah, that discounts you for ministry? No, he puts him right to work right after that. That's an amazing thing. And it really shows me, guys, don't wait to do ministry. Don't wait to serve God. Ask him what he would have of you, even right after your sin. <laughs> After your mistakes, like, God, forgive me. I, I, I need to get going again. You know, he did this with Elijah, and Elijah anointed kings right after this. He anointed Elisha, his successor, and poured his life into him. God wants to put you to work. He can't do it with perfect people. I struggle so much, and I plead with God just to continue to minister through me, even in my mistakes in my sin. 
So folks, that's a lot of things we can learn from this great man of faith, his highs, his lows, and different things we can use in our own lives. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you once again.